Okay, guys, we're back this week. Um, you guys were able to use that stuff, right? Yes. Yeah. Like it? Love it. Lots of good stuff there, guys. Lots. I mean, you know, the uh, word endings, delete word, uh, global, find. Uh, you know, just the moving around is really key. So, I mean, if, if you don't do anything else, use that moving around, up, down, left, right, whatever, okay? Mm -hmm. So, hopefully you guys used it, and it's helping, okay? All right, we're back this week. Do y'all have any questions about what we've gone over so far in the last several weeks? No? Okay. This week, what we're going to talk about is type over tracking. I mean, insert and over type. I'm sorry, over type. Mm -hmm. Okay, we talked about it a little bit. Um, I think somebody got, was it you, Elizabeth? I yes, think it was, you. it was, yes. yeah, it would delete as I was writing, <laughs> yeah, typing. And this is what they're going to talk about okay. now. So if you're going in and you push in, and it's not just typing the word, but it's typing into the other word, that's what this is talking about. So this is type over and insert. Let's see how insert mode and overtype mode affects typing in text. In text. Here insert mode is on and the indicators are that the toolbar icon looks pushed in and there's a... Okay, I, I think I'm going to do this a little bit better. Before I used to do it where I go through and play the whole thing and then I come back and play it again. We're not going to do that anymore. So as, as we're playing it, I'm going to stop it and kind of explain to you. So this is what should appear on your computer okay if this is what you wanted to do and I'm telling you 90 percent of the time 95 percent of the time this is the way that you want it to handle it okay so make sure that that's on INS okay okay and it's not the other thing that we were talking about like last week it's a different INS okay so it's insert not the bad one also, an INS visible on the status bar at the bottom of the screen. When I begin typing, the new letters get inserted. You see what it's doing right there? Mm -hmm. So when you, when you start typing, that's what it's going to do. It's going to start inserting mm -hmm. the next word, okay? In front of the old ones, and when I press the enter key, that chops off the rest of the word that I was replacing. Here, overtype mode is on, which you can yes. tell because there's an OVR visible on the status line at the bottom of the screen, and because the toolbar icon does not look pushed in. When I start typing to replace this word, each letter overtypes the one that's there. And you see what it's doing? Mine says OVR. It does? Yes, it does. Press the INS. Button, which should be so I have zero. to open the toggles, right? No, it should be zero. Okay. On your zero. No, 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 no. The number bar, the number zero, on your right hand side. See where it has INS. If I come over there, <laughs> uh, it should be on the right hand side. Little keys right here. It says here. help topics. Right no, wait, there, where like it that? says insert. Oh. Weird. Super Crazy. Weird. I know. When did that come up? Okay. <laughs> when I told you. And that's how you kind of turn it on and off, okay? Usually. So if it's not doing it, then it might be the function button like I was telling you guys, okay? But it should do it, okay? And this is this is what it's doing right here. I'm going to rewind it just a bit. Each letter overtypes the one that's there, and then the new letters push on as necessary. Now, if that's what you wanted to do, help yourself. I don't really care. It doesn't matter, okay? Okay? So, the thing that I was emphasizing to you guys is when, is it, when it's in insert mode, it makes it a little bit easier, I think, okay? Because like when you're in insert mode, what it does is you're in, um, you're typing it in, it's moving the word over, so if you wanna track that word, Every time that you go in there and hit in out of hyper keys, it's automatically going to bring in the word that you just deleted. Remember? Yes. 
No. Remember? Yes. Okay. Now, it's not that big of a deal. If you don't want it to remember, it's not that big of a deal either. You type in the word, space over, hit enter twice, it's going to delete the word, and it doesn't remember the word. Remember? Okay. That one's pretty good too. Okay, now they come to the your turn thing and you can do this on your own time, okay? But what they're telling you to do is to type in new and you can do it right now. You can do it one time right now and every time that it has program, come down here. So you should be in hyper keys. Use your movements. Use your movements, not your arrow, okay? So now when I ask you to go somewhere, unless it's real far, try to use your movements. The more you use the movements, the easier it's gonna come to you, okay? So I'm telling you that for a reason. So come to program right here. Put your cursor on program. Hit in. <laughs> you got it? No, which lesson plan are we under? We're under uh, hyper keys. We're 45 minutes into the class and you're asking which? I'm like, yes, I don't mind. Page six. Well, at least somebody knew was drunk. Yeah. Um, my insert isn't working. Huh? My insert's not working. It's not. It's not doing the type. It's not over. changing. Uh, like, nope, it's not working. There's an insert up here that's not. They do shift control M, I think. Shift control. Oh. Did that do it? Yeah. Okay. It just changed. Okay. Shift Thanks. control M also will take the insert mode off, but it should just be zero. Are you with us, Slick? No? It's, a, it's down at about the middle of the page on hyper keys. Six. Welcome to the class. Oops. <laughs> Got it? Yes, I am there. How do you get into hyper keys? Alt Z. Alt Z. You should be in Alt Z right here at program. Okay? How do you get into insert mode? In. Thanks for the class participation on that one. <clears throat> in is insert. Okay, so now you want to use it as a uh, word processor. So now you're going to type something in, okay? Now I want you to type in new. So type in new. Don't shift over. Do what I'm telling you to do, okay? Press in. Type in new. Hit enter. Get you back into hyper keys. Enter again, deletes a word. Mine's not working. God. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry. Are you sure the control shift M just changed it to insert? You wanted us to type it in front of program, right? I'm sorry. So my program's gone. Is that what you wanted? So I typed in new. Is there's the other name, but there was program. No. Down here. Huh. Where it says your turn. So can I do the oops thing and go back? No. Probably. It may work. Try it. Is it? You need to put it in hyper keys. Okay, I'll see in hyper keys. Go back in. There we go, because I did what you did. Okay, there's hyper keys. See, what, you, what you're still doing is you're doing it at the same time. You need to do Alt, then Z, not Alt Z at the same time. I did, right? Okay, there, yeah. So now it's out of hyper keys. Okay. So do Alt, Z. Now it's back in. Okay. Now come down to the program. Oh, you see this one? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Down. Okay. Yeah, down. Yeah, it is. Okay. Switch. What do you do? Uh, over. Uh, mm -hmm. It's L. Mm -hmm. L is over. K is down. Then where did you want to go? Same work with it. Where do you want to go? Right there, program. Right there? Okay. Okay. Now do. Push in. Okay. I've been new. All right. Enter. Enter. Oh, okay, very right. good, thank you. Okay, so I typed here, I accidentally typed here, and it's not... It should be further down, where it says your turn is further down. But it won't change it to an insert. insert. It is an it's insert. It's insert, one. but it has yeah. this ML. Go down. But the end doesn't work. Like when I tried to delete the... 
K's here. Nothing happens. When I hit my N to insert, nothing, nothing happens. But it goes up and down. Get out. Get out of it. Exit? Yeah. Get back in. You may just need to reset. Do anything else. Do what I'm telling you to do. Now come down to this program where it's not just any program. Come down to program right here. So the next one. I don't push C or anything. Guys, do what I'm telling you to do. Go down to program, get on program, and type in. Hit in. Is it putting you in there? Yes. See? Now hit enter, enter. Good to go. See? So it remembers what you're doing, okay? Don't make it co more complicated than it needs to be, okay, guys? All right? So yeah. when we hit enter once, it doesn't remember. When you enter twice, when you hit enter key twice, that's when it does remember? No, when you hit in, when you hit in it's going to type the word. Right. When you hit enter again, all it does is put you back in the hyper keys. Okay. When it hits it again, then it deletes program. Right. So it remembers what you did. Now, if you don't want it to do it, Come down to this program right here where it says replace program. Come down to the next program. Next program. Got it? Right here. Where it says program. Got it? Yes. Got it. Now hit in mm -hmm. and type first. You see how new went away? Yes. And it put first. Mm -hmm. Now enter, enter. Mm -hmm. Now it's going to remember first. Not that big of a deal. If the next time it comes up and you want new, then you just type new again. But listen to this. If you want to come here, but this time in program, they want it first, but the next 50 times that they said program, they want new, you would come right here, press N, space over, type first, or you can hit N, New's going to come up, you type first, space over, enter, enter, get you back into hyper keys, then deletes program. It doesn't remember first. Do you understand that? The only way that it's going to remember is if you don't space over from the word. Got me? Does that make sense? Okay. Don't space over. Don't space over if you want it to re keep remembering new. Mm -hmm. But if, if now you're like, now from here on down, now they want first every time it's programmed, then you want to do the procedure that you did up here with new. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Really? Okay. Because I know what, it, I know that I'm explaining it correct. I just don't, some of you have like blank faces and, you know, whatever. So I, I want to make sure that you get this because it's kind of important, okay, on the, on the overtime. Got it? Got it. Yes. Okay. Yeah, the other question. Yeah. When you go to the second program and you type in first, yeah. is it supposed to replace program? Because on mine it's just adding it. Yeah, it's supposed to replace it. Because if I go to program and I hit in. See how it says new? And then I hit enter, enter. No, oh, no, there no. Goes. You're supposed to type. Yeah. Okay. Or you, you were supposed to type, type first. Then. Don't worry first. about that. Paying attention. So. <laughs> Guys, I, I'm just messing with you guys, so don't don't get offended about the drunk thing or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So we got that? Yes. That's right. good. 
So, I mean, they have this thing, and what you can do, like I told y'all before, is that you can go up to um, help, reinstall the program, and do it all again. So if you want to go through and you're like, oh man, I already did it, but was it inner, inner, was it inner space, inner, I want to do it again. You can go up there, reload the program, go to help, install program, hyper keys, enter, enter, it reinstalls the program, you're good to go. So it puts everything like it was before, okay? So if you want to mess with it a little bit more, there's still a couple of more programs or whatever, okay? Mm. All right, now we're going to talk about type over tracking. Let's see what's meant by type over tracking. Over tracking. If I place my cursor on a word and press hyper key N to type in new text, then, after typing, press the enter key a couple of times to chop off the type over. Total Eclipse remembers the replacement. User settings, programming, type over tracking. This line was added automatically. Let's see what it means. If I place my cursor on this same word somewhere else in my transcript, Eclipse will offer to automatically replace it for me and save me some typing. You see what it's telling you right there? Just the stuff that we just went over. Okay, and that's what it's called. It's called type over tracking. So whenever you go to shorts, it's automatically going to put authorities, and that's what it's telling you. Okay. Kind of just like the find. If you find a word, you can change it. Yeah, where you can change it every time. So if you want to go through there and change it throughout the whole document, and you know, like I was telling you guys, it was Smith, but it's supposed to be Smith with an E. Mm -hmm. Then you can go through and change it every time, and that's how that's how you can do it also. Okay, you type in, you're automatically in hyper keys, you push in, it automatically comes up Smith with an E, enter, enter, and then you do the find again, which is what? In hyper keys? F. F. For find, remember? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's see it in action. I'll place my cursor here and press hyper key N. There's the type over suggestion. It may look a bit distracting, but it could certainly save me some typing. <laughs> to accept the suggestion, just press the enter key. Otherwise, start typing. There's no need to press extra keys like escape or backspace just to get rid of the type over suggestion. Also, keep in mind that... It's the same thing that I was telling you about changing it or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you want to change it to something else, it was authorities when they went in and changed it on shorts the first time, okay? Now they're going to change it to short, okay, instead of shorts, and they want to change it every time. Now it's not authorities, it's short, so that's what they're telling you. It's the same thing as, as doing it, okay? This is kind of the long way of doing it. I think it's a little bit more confusing. If you go through your user settings and change it and type over tracking, you don't really need it. We just did it, okay? By doing the N, type it in, enter, enter, you didn't space over, so it remembers. You space over, it's not going to remember, okay? If you type in a new word and press the space bar, that's not considered a type over that needs to be tracked. You hear what they just said? Just what I just told you, okay? So if you space over, they're, they're saying, you know what, I, you don't want me to remember this. So it's not going to remember it, okay? One final note. Type over tracking is a typing feature. It's not a global replacement or a dictionary entry. Normally, the system is constantly tracking your type overs, but you can lock entries in your type over tracking table, which is symbolized by an exclamation point. Here, I've added these two lines because my steno for doesn't and accident is almost identical. You see what they're telling you there? That's where type over tracking in your user settings comes in handy. Not for the other thing that we just talked about, okay? So if you, if you write two words that are similar and you have a habit of dragging that one key in all the time, this is a way of doing it. So it gives you that option of changing it, okay? So if it's in accident and you go into in, it's automatically gonna bring up doesn't. If it's doesn't and you want it to change it to accident, you press in, it automatically brings up accident. Does that make sense? Pretty neat. It's a pretty neat feature, but I mean, really? I mean, if you type that bad, 
I mean, it happens. Don't, I mean, and I'm not making fun. I'm just saying. I mean, if you do, this is going to help you. Okay? If you have two things that are really that similar, mm. that you really have problems with, and it's two totally different words, that's it. Okay? Not there, there, and there. Okay? Which you should write different anyway, and if you don't, you're going to by the end of this class, I promise. Because you're not getting out of this class by doing that one. Okay? They give it as an example, but it's a poor example because you shouldn't be writing that way. Okay? Make sense? Yes. Yes. No. Yes. I don't want to create a conflict entry in my dictionary, but I do want a fast way to insert the replacement text from time to time. And that's what it's doing. So it's just replacing it every time, okay? So you would go into settings. Yeah. Programming. Which is, how do you get into settings? Well, I've got a little toggle button up here. What did I say about yep. those? I just have... Well, we haven't learned it yet, so you're not going to get smacked just okay. yet. Okay. But it's all I you. I just have a very all small line. All you is line. for user all you. Okay. settings, okay? And that's what the um, U is. So you go into alt U, programming, yes. and come into type over tracking. It may not let me do it because it's it's in this right, thing or whatever, display. but it's not it's not really going in there. Programming. Right. Okay. Tap over tracking. Got it. Yeah, it's not going in for some reason. But that's how you do it. And okay. this is for your whole dictionary, or just the job. That's going to be for your whole dictionary. If you're using it in user settings, yeah, mm. probably for your whole thing. So you want to be careful when you do things like that, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Any questions about that? So this just means every time I hit the N, like if I get to one of these words and I hit the N, it's going to insert the other the word on the other side of the equal sign. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you do two words that are similar, that's what it's for, okay? This is the other thing. They repeat a lot of these little things, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it. And this was a mouse and key commands, okay? So I'm gonna, we're going to watch the video, but it's I may not even stop the video unless I really feel like it's something important. But this should be stuff that you kind of know already. Let's see how you can use either the mouse or keyboard commands for just about any function within Total Eclipse. Total Eclipse. The left mouse button is typically used to click or select, while the right mouse button opens a context menu. You may be clicking on a toolbar icon, or a menu column, or simply clicking to position your cursor. Right clicking will open a context menu, which will vary according to where your cursor is placed. However, there's no need to constantly reach for the mouse. For instance, you can press F10, or just press the Alt key and release to access the menu bar, H for help. Every Eclipse menu or dialog has hotkeys as an alternative to using the mouse. But if there's any place where you can type in a dialog, then Windows requires you to press the Alt key in order to use the underlined letter as a hotkey. You know, you were just asking me, and it's not really pertaining to this right now, but I'm going to answer your question. You were asking me if, like, you do that overtype tracking in that job, mm -hmm. you can do it because it has current document. So if that thing is punched in, then you can do it as the current document. But if you change it in here, and it says master document. format, you just change it in your whole thing, okay? Right. Which is kind of cool because if you're in the document and you want to change it, you want to make sure that it's in your master format, you can do that. Okay? So there's a lot of things that you can do and change stuff for it to go into your master format. Be careful with that. Okay? Hotkeys are underlined letters on menus or dialogues, but Eclipse also encourages you to use speed keys, which bypass the menus entirely. For instance, Alt-T to translate, and Shift-Alt-T to stop translation. 
And finally, there are Eclipse Hyper Keys, which are even more efficient than using a mouse or speed keys. But this is the subject of a separate presentation. Which we've already done. Mm -hmm. I don't even think I'm going to play this one because that was a, that was talking about the toolbar icon stuff. We really don't need to go through that again. So I don't want to waste y'all's time doing it again. Okay? And really, what they do is they just explain about all of these uh, little icons and configuring the thing. Do y'all want to see it again? No. Yeah, it's really not necessary. Okay, right here is what they're doing is they're, they're telling you about form fields, which I, I don't know why. I don't understand this part of the, the lesson that they're doing it because they're going to explain it later on how to fill in form fields and stuff like that. They're more talking about the icons and how to use the icons to do stuff like this. But I'm going to show you something neat uh, about when you do have these form fields. We're going to learn it again later, but it's actually pretty neat for tonight. So get anywhere in here somewhere. Make sure that you're in hyper keys. Okay. Ready? Page. Yeah, yeah, I'm there. Page and now just nine. press E. See how it goes into the form field? Now type your name in there. Does it go to the next form field? And enter. It automatically yep. goes to the next form field? Yep. And just yes. fill it in. It's asking for the date. Just put in whatever date you want. Put in today's date if you want. It goes to another form field. It should go to this one, witness. Yep. You can just type in a name. And then, the, you know, same thing on the attorney. Just create a name or whatever. So that's just kind of neat. So what it'll do is a lot of times it's going to have this MLT down here. Do y'all have the MLT? It should be somewhere down here. It's going to have MLT. No, it was there before I exited out. It's not here. It's not? No, no I've got INS hyphen E. Do you do the shift control M? Try it. Control shift. There you go. See how I put the MLT? So the control shift M is going to put MLT back on there, which is mul uh, multiple. So what it's going to do is usually, I think that's what it, what it's supposed to do, and it, and it, it should be, is every time that you want to go, it's, it's going to move down to the next field. So if you're filling in your form fields, then that's what it's going to do. It's just going to keep going to the next one. Okay, it might be it might be doing it because we're in the exercise now of of doing it. So. Multiple means every time you hit enter, it just automatically goes. Is yeah. it only with form fields? That multiple? No. Like if you're hitting N and you hit enter. No, because if you hit like C for conflicts uh -huh. or U for untranslate, it's going to go to the next That's one. That's what multiple means. Yeah. Any and and we'll, we'll see that. We'll see that coming up. Okay. Okay. What most Eclipse users don't realize is that many Windows Explorer functions are available whenever you see a listing of file names, of file names. So if I highlight this file's name, I can simply press the delete key to send this file to the recycle bin. I could also highlight a file's name and either right click or press shift F10 to open a context menu. You notice I can rename the file from here Delete so, it, copy it. Copy. So if you want to rename the file, you want to do something with the file, that's all they're telling you right here, okay? Is right click on it, and then you go in, and then you can select any of these things. You can send it to like your desktop. You can make it uh, a little icon on your desktop if you want to go to that job really quick. They're going to show you that kind of later in, in the uh, lessons or whatever. But I mean, you can copy, cut, 
create a shortcut, which is what I was telling you, that creating the shortcut, send it to your main screen. Mm -hmm. So you can go directly into the job. I mean, unless it's just a huge job, you really don't need it, but whatever. I mean, this is how you do it. You can rename it, whatever, okay? I did perhaps paste it. And there's also the option to send to the desktop to create a shortcut, which will make it easy to reopen a file that won't be transcribed in a single sitting. Got it? Got it. That splitting the atom right there, guys. Okay, mm -hmm. nothing real tough about that, but I mean, that's how you're gonna do it, okay? So it's kind of important stuff, but not super hard. It, it's stuff that you probably should already know about. Right click and it's gonna give you the different options. Okay, got it? Okay. All right, any questions about that, about hyperkeys and the stuff that was in the hyperkeys lesson? No? All right, mm -hmm. so exit out of that. Go into help, lesson player, movements. How do you enlarge it? It's shift control huh? F7. Shift control F7. Shift control F7. Okay, and really this is kind of, well they didn't really go over it. They did a little bit, but now they're gonna kind of go over it more. About the movements, we've already done it, okay? Mm -hmm. So we're not gonna spend a ton of time on it because one, you should have been practicing on it Thursday through the weekend, which I'm sure y'all did, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, y'all did. So I is up, K down, J and L is left and right, okay? Here, what they're talking about is the auto punctuation too. And we kind of went over that last week. Remember about how do you put a Q in there? At the end of the sentence. Question. Mm. A question mark. Question mark. Uh, if you're in hyper keys. Or what you learned last week. Yep, you hit the in Q. In hyper keys. You hit the Q. Is Q. Yep. <laughs> I've been using the P. I'm glad you remembered, huh? Yeah, I've been using the P. P is period. So you can be anywhere in that sentence. Remember, guys? Remember? Guys, this is good stuff, okay? And that's why I told you, go into that sheet that I gave you and look at everything that it does. There's some really neat stuff. And that, that's why I told you guys, we learned a lot of stuff last week. A lot. Reversing words, mm -hmm. toggling stuff from capital to non-capital to punctuation, word endings, movements, globaling, find, insert, delete. Guys, there's a ton of stuff. Mess with that stuff. Because you're going to say, oh my God, I never knew that it did that. Well, we went over in class. Maybe you just missed it. You know? But, I mean, it's stuff that's really going to help you because you don't have to go to the end of the sentence now. You can be at the beginning of the sentence. And that sentence can be three paragraphs long. And as long as it's the same sentence and there's not a punctuation, and by punctuation I mean period or, or question mark, commas it's not going to affect. Semicolons, none of that stuff is going to affect. It's going to put it at the end of the sentence, okay? So now you don't have to arrow down, arrow over, put the question mark at the, give me a break, okay? It's gonna save you time. Okay, if you remember these things, like you wrote it down last week, remember? Mm -hmm. P, period, Q, question mark. And you can try it in here too. You know, get anywhere in here and you can get right here or here at if, and it should put it right there and change it to a question mark, and you can. You have to be in hyper keys and just push Q. 
Got it? Yes, sir. Did it do it? Hmm? Yeah? Yep. Okay. And all you have to do is hit P if you want to change it back to period. You don't have to go and change it again. PQ, okay, in hyperkeys. Got it? Yes. And that's kind of what it's telling you right here. You can come right here and kind of do the same thing. Put a period there, put a question mark after this, whatever, okay? Okay, what it's telling you right now, and I've, I've told you guys since we started doing the hyperkeys, is that hyperkeys are case sensitive. And what it means by case sensitive is the shift. Okay, so the most important uh, duty that you want it to do, function that you want it to do, is going to be the lower case. Okay, that's the one that you're going to do the most. Okay, and it knows that. But it doesn't mean that you're not ever going to use right. the other. Right. Okay, the one that you're going to use the most, or that they think is going to be used the most, is going to be the smaller one. And this is what they're talking about now, is doing the shift, which is capital, right? Yeah. So all it's going to do is, is it's not going to make a capital letter, remember? Because in hyperkeys, it's functions. It's not letters anymore. So now you're asking it to do a function. And that's what they're telling you right here, is that it's case sensitive, but there's a way of doing other things by doing the shift. Okay? Okay. And that's what, capital J. So, put your cursor on a word. You're in hyperkeys, right? Which is? Mm -hmm. Alt Z, okay? And do Shift J. Mm -hmm. See how it moves one character? That's so cool. Yeah. So if you need to move one character, that's how you do it. The same thing with L, okay? Shift L moves the character right by one character, okay? Mm -hmm. J, just J and L, right? It's Shift J. Right. Shift J and Shift L, or if you need to do it, if you need to, there's always different ways of doing stuff, you can do control arrow. So get on a word and do control arrow right or left, and you'll see that it'll move, right? Mm -hmm. So control arrow over will do it. But this way, the way that they're telling you and I shouldn't have told you the other way, but I'm giving you options, okay? So whichever you find easier. But they're trying to keep your hands yes. close to what you're doing, okay? So they don't want you to move your hands completely, you know, so you just have to move the one hand over to the shift and then J or L over to get over to that character. Does that make sense? C, no. Also, you can do the shift I and shift K and get on there. So now it's going to move it down a sentence. Does it? See how it does that? So pretty cool stuff. You're not splitting the atom or, you know, anything like that, but it's pretty cool stuff. Good stuff to know. Okay. This, super cool. Write this down. Alt S is a spell check. So get on a word, get on right here, performs. Get on performs, right here. And do the shift S. Well, I mean, I'm sorry, I think it's Alt S. It's Alt S. S. 
Alt S. I'm sorry. It's not Shift Alt S. Alt S will check a word. Shift Alt S will check the document. You understand what I'm saying? So there's a there's a icon up here. It doesn't show it because we're in the uh, we're in the uh, lesson player. Okay. Let me see if I can bring up another one. See right there. Right here where this arrow is, how it has spell check? Yes. So there's an icon there for spell check also. And it's on the main one. So you should only have one pressed in, but if you have all the nine, like I told you not to do, it's still gonna be up here, okay? But you should just have the one. Well, it's, it's not gonna because show it because- It's in a lesson. It's in a lesson. One. Two, you may not have it because it's a student version, okay? But you still have the shift all desks, which should do the same thing. Okay? So get on to performs and do the all desks. And it should bring up a box of different. Uh, yeah. I had to hit it twice. Alt S two times. Yeah, and you may have to do up. it twice. But it should bring up the box of spelling alternatives, okay? And on there, you're going to see that it has, I mean, a lot of different things, okay? So I'm gonna get her performs also. Alt S, Alt S. So if you wanna move this thing up, y'all know how to do that, right? Put the arrow right there, left click, hold it down, and then just kind of drag it while you're still holding down. Y'all know how to do that? Okay. So it kind of gives you a lot of different options. You can even go hit definition. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's gonna give you the definition. It doesn't really give you the definition because it's a form of perform. It's the plural of perform, okay? So it's, it's just telling you right there, the original is perform and I guess that it's a verb, so it can be a noun, verb, whatever, okay? But, I mean, you can go into any of them. So you can say, well, what is uh, perforce? Or perforce, what is that, perforce? Perforce. Perforce. Now you go into perforce, now it tells you. And it gives you, and all you have to do is drag that little thing down and it gives you the complete definition of that word. Guys, super, cool stuff right there, okay? Because one thing I can tell you is I took um, something the other day, and I'm embarrassed, but I'm not. But they were talking about illicit drugs, okay? Well, there's, a, there's, I think, three different ways to write illicit. Illicit, illicit, and I think it's illicit, A. Is illicit? I don't know. There's at least two, okay? So I'm, go back. Mm -hmm. So you can come in here and say it's a totally different word and now it's illicit. Well, I don't know if it's spelled right. I don't know, I don't know. So you know what, now I wanna check it. So now you can check the definition. So now it's gonna give you the different, and I had spelled it wrong, okay? So you come up here, and it's to draw out or forth, you vote to elicit a reply, okay? Well, that's not the one I need, because that doesn't mean uh, like illicit drugs, uh, Illegal. Illegal. Yeah. Okay. So that's not the definition. That's not the definition that I need. Okay. So the one that I need is this one. Unlawfully. 
That's the one that I need. An unlawful drug is an illicit drug, okay? Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you don't have to be on the word. Like, I'm on perform right now. I'm on the word perform and in that dictionary, and I'm checking illicit. So you can do that. You see how you can do it? And you can do all kinds of different things, okay? You can, when you're going through spell check, and let's say you have Krzyzewski, okay? And you have Krzyzewski 94 times in that doggone job, okay? And you're going through spell check. You don't wanna just keep hitting okay, 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 when you know that Krzyzewski is spelled correctly, okay? So it's gonna come up here, and let's just say that it's illicit, Mr. Illicit, okay? And it's a proper name, it's not in your dictionary. You don't really want it in your dictionary, that's okay. But you don't want it to stop on Mr. Illicit every dog on time, okay? So now what you do is ignore all. Mm -hmm. So now every time that it's spelled like that, it's just gonna skip it. But say you wrote Mr. Illicit and it was I-L-L-I-C-I-T -L -L -I -I or whatever, now it's gonna come to it. Because now it's not Mr. Illicit, it's Mr. Illicit. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. So now it's gonna stop on it. It's like, you know what? Oh shoot, I spelled it wrong that time. Or, you know, and go back to the um, the example that I gave y'all before of Smith. Oh, well it's Smith, um, you know, spelled without the E. Well, I think I changed it every time. Well, you know what? Smith probably should be in your dictionary because you're gonna hear it a lot. Smith, Garza, Gonzalez, blah, blah, blah. All the stuff that you're gonna hear these days anyway. Okay, you have a certain way of hitting it, okay? There's certain ones you have to be careful, okay? Because I do it, and you can do it however you want, and then we really shouldn't be talking about it because it's gonna come up in dictionaries. But I do, I have trouble, and I don't know why, hitting Isaiah, the name Isaiah. So I do IS twice. ISIS, -is. is is, with an asterisk. Mm -hmm. Asterisk, IS, asterisk, IS, asterisk, okay? So now every time I hit that, it comes up Isaiah, okay? Well, say they have Mr. Istromberg. Well, guess what? I'm not stroking that out every time, <laughs> okay? But the first thing that comes to mind is IS. So I do IS, IS, okay? Well, there's a way of changing it. You glow in there and you global it into the job dictionary and it automatically changes it. But I hear Isaiah a lot more than I hear Istromberg. You see? So I kind of have it in my dictionary as, I probably shouldn't, but whatever. I mean, it's not that big of a deal, mm -hmm. okay? But that's what I was telling you about this, is you can go in there and change these things and you can do the ignore all and now it's not gonna go to that word anymore, okay? Does that make sense? Yes. Or you can go in there and change it, okay? So now if it's illicit and they're talking about illicit drugs, but you wrote uh, illicit, now you can go in there and change it every time and that's where you wanna change all. Mm -hmm. And every time it goes to illicit, it's automatically gonna change it. Got it? Yes. There's a lot of stuff right here, guys. A lot of stuff, mm -hmm. okay? So, and global, is that changing at the global level at your global dictionary? And it, and it could, yeah. So, I don't know how that would come about, but. Well, there's no, I mean, it has to have like steno track. So you have to write it the same, you know? So if right. you stroked it the same every time, now you can global it, okay. okay? If not, then it's not gonna global it. Like say I wrote ISIS for Istromberg, and this time I hit, my, my finger just dragged a little bit on the R. And I have um, I asterisk IS, I asterisk RS. It's not gonna read it because it's not reading, it's not reading the notes. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that one on the global, you can. But I mean, I'd much rather do it the other way on just the change all. Or you can global it in the document by yourself without having to go through this step right here. Which, how do you global? G. G. 
Okay? You got it? Why do you say that you shouldn't have your Isaiah in the dictionary? Well, because you can have Istromberg, you can have, I mean, not that you're going to have that, but I mean, what's another one? I mean, if you hear Isaiah that much, you know, but every time you hit IS, it's going to come up Isaiah. So regardless of whether, what you hit, if you hit asterisk IS twice, it's going to come up Isaiah because it's in your main dictionary. Now, I don't really use IS that much for anything else. So it doesn't really matter. But uh, there's a couple of them. Like Rodriguez. I do Rod Rod. So whenever somebody Rodriguez comes in, I always do Mr. Rod Rod, okay? So anytime that Rodriguez comes up, but if um, Rodrigo, I'm taking the deposition of Rodrigo, guess what? I'm not typing that every time either because it's three strokes. So I can cut it down by one stroke by making a uh, shortcut, okay? So I'm gonna do Rod Rod. Not that big of a deal. It comes up Rodriguez every time, okay? But I wanna come in and every time I do Rod Rod, I wanna change it to Rodrigo. Careful with that, okay? Because now, maybe his name is Rodrigo Rodriguez. <laughs> you know? So, now you have to come up with something else. But isn't that hard, okay? Maybe, um, I mean, you just had the asterisk for Rodrigo and leave Rod Rod as Rodriguez and it's gonna know, okay? But you have to be thinking ahead, okay? Because, and I, I've done it before, trust me guys, because I've done it where, you know, it was Rodrigo, we had, I mean, it was, uh, they said Rodrigo, so I hit Rod Rod, then all of a sudden, um, somebody's sitting in for somebody else and he goes, oh, Judge, I'm sorry I'm late, I'm uh, Manuel Rodriguez, I'm sitting in for, and it's like, oh, Guys, you gotta be able to think like that. That's the thing about this job, is being able to think like that. And you may hit it the first time, not that big of a deal, just so that you know, right. okay? And if they ask you to read back, it's not gonna be from usually, sometimes. Not gonna be from like a day or two ago. It's gonna be from like five minutes ago. Whoa, what did he say when he came in? What did he say his name was? Usually not gonna ask you to do it, but maybe. Okay? Well, when he came in, he said, you know, sorry for being late, Judge. My name is Mr. Rodriguez. But it came up Rodrigo because you have your, um, um, you have your real time going, and it automatically, you had already changed it. The Rod Rod this time is not Rodriguez, it's Rodrigo. Are y'all following me? Okay, so just be careful with that and whatever. But really, I mean, we kind of got a little bit off. Guys, really cool right there, okay? And really, you shouldn't be doing a test without doing this on the spell check. Always spell check your word, your whole document. You should always spell check it because you just never know and you don't want to fail a test because you got everything and you misspelled some words and you want to miss it on a misspelling. Really? No, that should be the least of your worries, okay? You want to miss it because you dropped words and you're just not completely at that speed yet, not because of dumb editing errors, mm -hmm. okay? <clears throat> so all tests is what? Spell check. Spell check. Spell check what? The word. One word. Right. Alt. Shift S is the document. Okay? All right. Write that down. Or not, whatever. <laughs> okay. We talked about this a little bit. Alto is what? Mm -hmm. Print. Print. Okay. And Control L? Okay. Really? It goes. And it's kind of a tough one. I'm not going to whack y'all today, but <laughs> you're going to remember this now. On yeah. the find, remember? Right. When you find a word, you go in there, and, you, and every time you want to find Krzyzewski, 
okay? You type in Krzyzewski, hit enter, it goes to that word. Mm -hmm. How do you find it again? Control, control L. So control L is the next occurrence of a search text, which is find, okay? Which is the same thing, okay? Make sense? We went over that already. Yeah. Okay? Previous, okay, the shift goes backwards. I'm sorry? When you hit the shift with the L, control L, it goes up. Yes. It goes the opposite way. Okay. All right. They're going to tell you a little bit later, and I think this is what they're trying to tell you is that you can kind of change them, and it's kind of in a different lesson where they're going to teach you this, and I guess this is what they're doing. But if you if you come right here on offers, I'm going to show you something pretty neat, okay? So you're going to want to write these three things down. Do alt, get right here on offers. Mm -hmm. Actually, you can get right here on T for total, okay? And now do Alt-1. Put OK. Huh? It added a question mark. Is that what it's supposed to do? OK. Translate notes. That's what came up. You said Alt and the number 1? Yeah. Yes. Okay, you know what? I did Alt-1 on the number key, mm -hmm. then I get the question mark. If I do Alt-1 up here, I get the black box. Oh, the hyper keys? No, um, yes, I'm in hyper keys, yes. So, which is interesting, right? If you do Alt-1 on the number <coughs> block, you get the question mark insert.
See, and it's not doing it because I think we're in the lesson player, okay? You see what it just did right there? It adds okay. Alt one adds okay. Alt two adds all right. And alt three should do comma, you know, comma. So get into a different document. So get into something that, uh, a job that you did where you were writing. Okay. How do you open a new page? I'll um, minimize that. Here? This yes. Yeah. And go into Alt-E. Alt-E. Okay. Let's see if it does it. And go down. Is that one of your jobs? I think so. Just open that first one. Mm-hmm. Minimize. Alt E. Go to the first one. Is it, Dion, will it let you open a job where you have something? It will be lessons for me. I'm sorry? You go all the way to the bottom. I think these are all. Okay, minimize the whole thing. So come up here to the main thing and open, open Eclipse again. Is it okay? For and it's going to ask you if you want to open multiple copies. Okay. Yes. I think the last time I did that, it did, it kind of messed up my Eclipse, but it's okay. <laughs> so open and open another. So minimize the one that you're in. Go into Eclipse again, and it's going to ask you if you want to open multiple copies. Yes, you do. And in 45 minutes, when it <laughs> connects to the server, I think okay. Go Alt E. Yay! Now open one. Just pick one. It doesn't matter. And go all the way up. And right there, do Alt one. Yeah. Alt two. What? Alt three. That's so cool. Yeah. Okay. You get it. Everybody's doing it? Yes. You did two and three? Okay. It's actually pretty cool. Mm -hmm. It's when it works. Go up to your end, in there. Thousands. Do the whole. All one.
get into a different it's not the it's not the recorder hit that record button again we're going to go off for just a second guys you have to okay. say recording again. Okay.